This strange pattern keeps returning in pine cones, in galaxies, even in the way leaves grow from a stem. It's called the Fibonacci sequence, and it's often paired with something even more curious, the golden ratio. For centuries, artists and mystics believed it revealed hidden order in beauty. But now, engineers are starting to look at it differently. Could this old mathematical idea help us build better machines? When I came across a turbine shaped like a spiral found in nature, I had to dig deeper. And what I found made me question everything I thought I knew about design, nature, and energy. Fibonacci's real story, not rabbits, but numbers. We often hear the tale that Fibonacci discovered his famous sequence by counting how fast rabbits could multiply. It's a great story, but like many great stories, it isn't true. The real Fibonacci was Leonardo of Pisa, a curious mind living in the 12th century. He wasn't the first to see the sequence. In fact, the pattern had been known in ancient Indian mathematics for centuries. What Leonardo did was bring it to Europe. He learned the Hindu-Arabic numeral system from merchants during his travels and was blown away by how useful it was compared to clunky Roman numerals. So he wrote a book called Liber Abaci, and in it he explained a simple puzzle involving rabbits, not to make a discovery, but to demonstrate this new number system. In the puzzle, each number represents how many rabbit pairs would be alive each month. 1 plus 1 becomes 2, then 3, then 5, and so on, each number the sum of the two before it. What stuck wasn't the rabbits, but the pattern. And slowly, the sequence took on a life of its own, appearing in places far beyond what Leonardo ever imagined. From ratios to spirals, the birth of the golden curve. Some numbers just feel different. The golden ratio is one of them. It starts with a simple idea, divide a line so that the shorter part relates to the longer the same way the longer part relates to the whole. That's it. But what you get from that simple rule is something strange, a number that goes on forever without repeating, 1.618, and so on. Irrational, beautiful, and somehow everywhere. Ancient Greek thinkers like Pythagoras and Plato were fascinated by this proportion. Renaissance artists called it the divine proportion. Mathematicians today call it phi. But this number doesn't just live in equations. It creates shapes. If you take a rectangle with sides in the golden ratio and keep nesting smaller rectangles inside it, always shrinking by the same ratio, you get a spiral, a curve that expands outwards at a constant angle. This is the golden spiral. It turns endlessly, growing by the same amount with each quarter turn. And here's where things get interesting because a very similar spiral appears when you draw squares using the Fibonacci sequence too. Not identical, but close enough to confuse even careful eyes. Sacred geometry or wishful thinking. Once you hear about the golden ratio, you start seeing it everywhere. In famous paintings, in the layout of ancient temples, even in the shape of our faces. But here's the problem, most of it doesn't hold up. Take the Mona Lisa. People say her face fits perfectly into a golden rectangle, but try measuring it yourself. The proportions don't match. Same with the Parthenon in Athens. You can force a golden spiral over a photo, sure, but that doesn't mean the architects designed it that way. The same logic could be used to claim that your coffee cup follows divine proportions if you tilt it just right. It's easy to overlay spirals on things after the fact. That's not design, that's pattern hunting. And when it comes to nature, the confusion runs even deeper. Cyclones, galaxies, and ocean waves, all swirling with beautiful curves, are often called golden spirals. But they aren't. They're logarithmic spirals, yes, but not necessarily in the golden ratio. We want the universe to be built on sacred numbers. But sometimes, what we're seeing isn't ancient wisdom. It's just our minds trying to make sense of chaos. Nature's design. Fibonacci in the wild. But not everything is wishful thinking. In some corners of nature, Fibonacci's pattern shows up with eerie precision. Look at a sunflower. Its seeds don't scatter randomly. They spiral outward in two directions, creating a packed, efficient layout. Count them carefully and you'll find the number of spirals in each direction 
often matches Fibonacci numbers 34 to the left, 55 to the right, sometimes even 89. This arrangement isn't for looks. It allows seeds to fill space without overlap, maximizing the number that can fit in one flower head. Pine cones do the same, so do pineapples. Their repeating hexagons form spiral patterns in sets of Fibonacci numbers 8, 13, 21. Even the way leaves grow from a stem follows the math. There's an angle, 137.5 degrees, that lets each new leaf grow without blocking the one before. That angle comes from bending the golden ratio around a full circle. Nature doesn't care about perfection, but it does care about efficiency. The Fibonacci sequence isn't magic. It's geometry that works. It packs seeds. It gathers sunlight. It sends water down stems. And maybe, just maybe, it can help us build better machines too. Fibonacci goes turbine, the Spanish experiment. Most small wind turbines are built around practicality, not poetry. Take the Savonius turbine, a simple vertical axis design invented nearly a century ago. It doesn't care where the wind comes from. It spins quietly, works in low wind, and is cheap to build. But it has one major flaw. It's not very efficient. That's what caught the attention of a research team in Spain. They wondered if tweaking the shape of its blades using nature's spiral could make a difference. Instead of the usual smooth curve, they used the Fibonacci spiral as the blade profile. It was an odd fusion, ancient math on old technology. The results surprised them. The new spiral blades increased efficiency by 14%. That's a big jump for a small change. Why? It came down to drag. The advancing blade caught more wind, while the returning blade resisted less. More push, less pullback. Simple, but effective. Now, was it the Fibonacci spiral specifically, or just any logarithmic curve that did the trick? That part's still unclear. But this experiment showed something important. Nature's shapes aren't just beautiful. They can be powerful, especially when you put them in motion. Golden spiral meets water, a hydro revolution. Wind isn't the only place these spirals are making waves, literally. In a quiet lab, researchers tested a water turbine shaped by the golden spiral itself. Unlike traditional propeller turbines, this one widened smoothly, following that same 1.618 ratio as it curled around a central axis. At low water speeds, something fascinating happened. The spiral turbine outperformed the standard design by 15%. Same blade diameter, same water flow, but more energy is harvested. The spiral wasn't just spinning, it was gathering. The secret lies in the flow. Just like a plant's leaves are spaced to capture maximum light and rain, the spiral shape here seemed to scoop and redirect water more effectively. It wasn't just spinning with the current, it was controlling it. But the benefits faded as the water sped up. The golden spiral worked best in slow, steady conditions, a gentle stream, not a raging river. That makes it ideal for small-scale, off-grid applications, places where traditional turbines struggle or are too expensive. It's not ready to replace large hydro plants. But as a quiet, compact solution that borrows directly from nature, this golden spiral turbine opens a door to something new and very elegant. The Liam F1 Archimedes Turbine – Spiral in Action Let's talk about a spiral turbine that made it to market the Liam F1 Archimedes. It doesn't look like a wind turbine. No blades, just a ribbon-like form twisting into the wind like a seashell. Despite the name, the design isn't based on the Archimedean spiral. The company's CTO says it was inspired by the Golden Spiral, a logarithmic curve that expands naturally. When wind hits this shape, it behaves differently. Instead of using just drag or lift, it uses both. As air pushes in, it escapes sideways like a soft jet, creating a spin-inducing force. This makes it responsive even in weak winds. Tests show it reaches up to 40% efficiency, on par with the best urban turbines. It's quiet, sleek, and easy to imagine on rooftops, boats, or in backyards. A turbine that blends form and function, with ancient math quietly driving it. 
What spirals really teach us about energy? So, what do all these spirals actually teach us? Not every spiral is golden, and not every golden spiral works. But curved natural shapes, especially logarithmic spirals, are finding their place in engineering. Nature doesn't build in straight lines. It bends and repeats with intent. Spiral-based turbines aren't replacing massive wind farms. They're for cities, boats, or homes, where wind is messy and space is limited. These designs are quieter, easier to build, and sometimes more recyclable. A bent sheet of metal can become a power source. No high-tech parts needed. It's not about mysticism. It's about efficiency. And by observing nature's patterns, not copying them, but learning from them, we unlock new ideas. Small turbines shaped by spirals may not power a city, but they might power your home silently and beautifully. That's the lesson nature's been offering all along. We're just beginning to listen. We often search far and wide for innovation, but sometimes the answers have been quietly swirling in nature all along. Spirals in seeds, shells, and storms, once seen as symbols of beauty, may actually hold clues to smarter engineering. Whether it's the Fibonacci sequence or the golden ratio, these patterns are not just mathematical curiosities. They're tools. And when applied thoughtfully, they can reshape how we design, build, and harness energy. If this kind of hidden logic fascinates you too, consider exploring further. There's a lot more waiting beneath the surface. All you have to do is look.